Our theme today is show up in the cities. Don't you agree that God loves cities? Do you? Do you agree that God loves cities? So therefore, if he loves cities, he loves the people that are in the cities. There are three things that demonstrate God's love for cities. First, God sends messengers to cities. There are several cities that are mentioned in the Bible, Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, and even Nineveh. But what is a common factor between these cities? Most of them were epicenters for sin and evil. But nonetheless, God did not give up on them. He sent messengers to, to these cities with a message of love and compassion and an opportunity to change. We all know the story of Noah, correct? Not Noah, Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, correct? God said, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh. In fact, do you know that voice that there's always in the movies is like, Jonah. I need you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah, Jonah said, um, Lord, that can't be me you're talking about. Jonah told the Lord no. In fact, Jonah decided to go in the opposite direction of the city of Nineveh, correct? But as a child, I always wondered, why, why didn't Jonah want to go to Nineveh? What was what was wrong with Nineveh? Okay, it's a city. They're sinful people. We get it. But Nineveh was so bad that there are ancient scrolls that tell us that the kings of Nineveh would take their enemies and burn them. Isn't that evil? But despite their sinful ways, God still sent Jonah to Nineveh. And once Jonah finally got to Nineveh and preached the message that God had for him, the people were able to repent. God shows compassion for cities. God not only sends messengers, but he shows great empathy for people living in cities, especially when they're going through tough times. But what does compassion mean? It is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings of misfortunes of others. Amongst researchers, they said that it is defined as the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another's suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. So we know that our God is compassionate, correct? We know that he cares deeply about his people. When they're going through difficult times, whether we're feeling stressed, lonely, sick, when we feel like giving up, remember that God is saying, here am I. I'm right by your side. God transforms cities. The story, of, the story of Saul to Paul is a great transformation story. Saul was on a mission. He was heading to Damascus to persecute Christians. But on his way to Damascus, Acts 9 verses 1 through 6 tells us that God appeared to Saul. And since that moment, Saul has never been the same. In fact, what happened to Saul? His mind changed, his heart changed, and he even changed his name. Why do you think he changed his name? Because that name that he had, he didn't want to be associated with it because his past was not that nice. He, want, he was made new, so he wanted to change his name. He had a new identity. He had a new reason to travel. He had a new mission. It was a mission to spread God's message. Now, if God can transform a persecutor, someone that seeks to harm and hurt God's people, don't you think he can transform cities? When God's grace is in action, everything can change. Why? Because God is the expert transformer. Think about the changes you want in your life. You may be looking at your closet right now and it's like, ah, I want some new clothes, you know. Your car kind of don't sound the same way it used to sound, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, a little, a little sound that is not too nice, you know, right now. You, you might want a better job, a higher salary. You might want to get better grades in school. So, so do you think that if, if you just come and you say, <clears throat> Dear Father, I need a change, Lord. You know, you just go to Lord, I need a change, Father. Change it now. And you pray and you say, Amen. The next day you wake up, you, you, your closet, you have Versace and, and Louis Vuitton. Those that want a new car, you have a Lamborghini. 
You know, those that your grades weren't looking too good, you got A's in power school. You're an overnight millionaire. Do you think that prayer is all that it takes? Well, prayer is key. Prayer is very important for our Christian walk with God. But we must also put in the work for these changes. So therefore, we need to see changes in our cities. Don't we have to go out and preach the gospel? Just praying for our neighbors, just praying for our people. We see someone on the street, oh, they're homeless. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray that they get $10,000 tomorrow. Amen. Don't you think you have to go out and help? You might realize that they might need a home. So you and your church brethren, you come together and you say, we are praying for you, but we also want to give you this. A little, a something simple. It doesn't have to be a lot. Okay, church? Matthew 9, verse 35 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. In this scripture, there are three key verbs. The first verb is to teach. Jesus spends his time sharing his wisdom with the crowds and in the cities. And the thing is, he taught, what he taught was also reflected in his actions, correct? Our second verb is preach. A preacher is someone who, oh, 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 hold on. A preacher is someone who, okay, that's five brownie points. <laughs> the definition of preach is to deliver a sermon or religious address to an assembled group of people. Isn't that what Jesus did? Didn't he preach to the multiple, multitudes? <laughs> Spreading the good news of salvation and the kingdom of heaven is what preaching is. So young people, when you see me here on this pulpit, you see pastor up here on the pulpit, that is not the only way of preaching. When you tell people about the love of God, when you tell people why you are a Christian, when you tell people about the Sabbath, that is preaching. Our third verb is to heal. Jesus was a healer. We know multiple stories of Jesus healing the sick. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. He brought the dead back to life. He healed so many different people. The leopards told the lame man to walk. So therefore, Jesus is the ultimate healer. But not only was he a physical healer, he was a spiritual healer. Being a healer doesn't mean to only heal the sick. It also means taking care of those in need. You could visit the sick, the shut-in. You could help people that are in hospitals. You can show love to orphans and just check up on your brothers and sisters in the church. Jesus was a teacher, a preacher, and a healer. And as his people, we should want our actions to reflect him, correct? By being missionaries for God in our cities, we can help transform the lives of many people. Because currently, there are people seeking for companionship. They feel lonely and depressed. They're hurting and they are afflicted with illnesses. They are seeking answers. And as Christians, we know that Jesus is the answer. He's a friend to the lonely, a comforter for the depressed, and the ultimate doctor. Our world, our cities are stricken with illnesses like pollution, Overpopulation in certain areas, limited health care services, diseases, and mental health issues. We see what is happening across the globe. Families are being broken. People are losing their lives. And all these factors can leave people with a feeling of hopelessness. There's a man in the Bible that a lot of people will consider his life hopeless. He was sold by his brothers. He was eventually bought and made a servant in a foreign country. And after gaining his master's trust, he was falsely accused and sent to prison. Then his cellmates, he predicted their dream. And what happened with um, his interpretation, it happened. And the person that was set free forgot about him. His cellmate might have forgotten about him, but Jesus didn't. Joseph could have given up. 
Joseph could have said, Lord, every time I get a glimpse of hope, every time there seems to be better days ahead, everything comes crashing down. I've been betrayed, I've been falsely accused, and now my own soulmate has forgotten me. He could have cursed God, but instead he never lost his faith in God. He didn't know that God had bitter, bigger and better plans for him, but he knew that God never left his side. Joseph eventually became Pharaoh's second in command. Again, he was sold to be a slave, and he became Pharaoh's second in command. God blessed him with a gift to interpret dreams, therefore being able to prepare Egypt for a great famine. Because of this, many lives were saved. But imagine how difficult and how hopeless he would have felt if he didn't know that God was by his side. There are people right now that are going through certain things and they feel alone. They don't know that God is there with them, that God is carrying them through these struggles that they are going through. They don't know about the great comforter, the almighty healer, and our wonderful redeemer. But that's where we as Christians come in. We can share the love of God with them. We can tell them that God is right there by their side. God never gives us more than we can bear. And even though in our minds, we might think that certain things is the end for us. Like some people might say when they lose their job, it's the end of the world. Your car, you have no car, you have no form of transportation. Things are getting difficult. You have family issues. Maybe you weren't accepted into a program that you worked really hard for. Maybe something happened and your grades completely hit rock bottom. And it's report card day. And your parent says, um, Abigail, where's your report card? You're looking at the report card. You're looking at your parents. You're looking at the report card and it's like, what? It's just second, it's just the second quarter. These grades don't matter that much. <laughs> but you know that your mother or father is looking at you, and you know that's that verse that they love to quote, spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> In those moments, you might feel hopeless. But when you're hopeless, who do you turn to? You turn to God. So what about those that don't know about him? Who do they turn to? To the person that lost their job and has three children to feed. To the child that doesn't want to go home because they're in an abusive household. To the parents that lost their child in a school shooting. What do you tell these people? They need to know that they are not alone. They need to know that God is watching over them. God feels what we feel. And we can share the love of God with them. And we can tell them that God is right there by their side. If you don't know, you don't always know what's going on in someone's life. A brief interaction with them could introduce them to God. Just as simple, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I'm going to church. Oh, really? You're going to church? Uh, I, I used to go to church. Oh, you want to come to church? Simple things like that, church. Simple things. It could help them draw closer to God. Maybe they were drifting away, and the fact that you always talk about Jesus, you say, my God is good to me. He's been so wonderful to me. Simple things like that. By the way you act, whether it's at school, whether it's at work, people are watching church. People see you. They see the reflection of God in you. Small steps lead to big changes. Small steps can bring people in a community together to worship. And this is how we make changes in our city. Like Jonah, we may not think that certain people won't change. You look at that person, they've been the same way. They've been an alcoholic for three, four, five years, and you say, oh, they could never change. We might say they're too far gone, but no one can ever stray so far away from God that he cannot reach them. Jonah, Jonah tested this. He went in the opposite direction of Nineveh, he went to Tarshish. He said, ain't no way I'm going to Nineveh, Lord. He was so determined to not follow God's command. But yet God is the creator of the world. He's the creator of the universe. He is your creator. 
So therefore, how can you outrun God? When God has a plan for you, no matter how far you go, he will still be there. Imagine the thoughts that went through Jonah's mind as the storm became stronger when he was on the boat. The men started crying out to their gods to save them. And Jonah knew that he was the reason why this storm was happening. So eventually he said, I will sacrifice myself to save the men on this ship. Jonah jumped. He did. And when the storm ceased after the men on the boat realized the true God, even in Jonah's stubbornness, even in Jonah's defiance, People were still brought to God. People still found out about God. But Jonah wasn't done with him. He said, "Uh uh-uh, I'm going to send a fish for you. Because I don't know who you think you are. I think you're going to get out of this. Because I need you to go to Nineveh. God sent the fish and it swallowed Jonah. He was in there. He probably had to meditate in that fish for a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. And eventually it spat him out. And you know what? At this point, he's like, I've been on this boat. I almost drowned. The Lord saved me. Might as well I go to Nineveh. I think that was the smartest decision Jonah made. Eventually, Jonah made it to Nineveh, and he preached. He probably was like, oh, if you guys don't um, repent, your city's going uh, to be no more. You know, Jonah was probably around just saying, okay, repent, repent. But he did not expect the people of Nineveh to repent, now did he? But still, they found it in their hearts. They listened to his message and they said, we need to change. Eventually, the people of Nineveh did repent. They repented and because of their change, their city was saved. Now imagine if Jonah never went. A whole city would have never heard about God's love and forgiveness. The old and the young, all of them would have perished. But God showed his compassion, and because of the people's action, they were spared. As we spread God's message, and as we show up in the cities, we ought to live a life that is pleasing to God. Because if we are going to talk the talk, we have to walk the walk, correct? You don't have to venture far and travel overseas to see the chaos that is happening nowadays. It's here in America. It's here in the States. It's here in Winston-Salem. But we have a powerful message. The Adventist Church has a powerful message. It is a message of love and a message of hope. It is a message that we can spread to tell people of God's second coming. God loves us so much. He has so much compassion for us. Time and time again, he stretches out his loving arms towards us, and he lets us know that he never left us. With conviction in our hearts, we should be eager to spread God's word. We should be ready to go where he tells us. We should be like Jesus by spreading And by living a life like him, we should listen to his words and we should tell everybody that the Lord is coming again. Amen, church? Because once we start, just a little change can create something big. By telling your classmates, oh yeah, I go to church on Sabbath. I personally have had a lot of people ask me, Oh, you talk about Sabbath all the time. What is, what is Sabbath? What is seven-day Adventism? And I tell them, it is a group of people that I love also very dearly. I'm not even going to lie. I am very happy and blessed to be Adventist. Don't you think you are happy? Do you feel happy and blessed to be Adventist? Yes. Aren't you happy to be in the house of the Lord every single Sabbath? Yes. A lot of people my age don't go to church often. Or they go to church And they're like, oh, I'm just here. They listen to praise and worship. It's all good. The pastor preaching, they on their phone. Church, that's not how we get a connection with God. That is not how we spread God's message. If we're just in church sitting, we're not receiving anything, church. But I believe that once we have that burning passion in our hearts, and once we truly 
have that connection with God and we want to spread God's message, we can change little by little. We can bring change to our cities and we can spread God's loving message around the world. Amen.